Hello, welcome back. We're talking today about psychological health and in particular, treating depression. So the uh, initial quiz you took asked if you're feeling depressed. And if you said yes, I recommend you take the full depression screen or PHQ-9, which I provide as a resource in this lecture. And how you score on that depression screen will give us a, a clue to the severity of your depression and what treatments will be most effective. A score less than 10 suggests mild depression. A score of 10 to 14, moderate depression. A score of 15 to 19 is moderate to severe depression. And a score of 20 to 27 is severe depression. So for treating depression, we'll look First, at the evidence, this was a large systematic review and meta-analysis. It showed that depressed people after, during their follow-up in the studies had a 71% chance, greater chance of dying than people who were not depressed. And on average, that meant 10 years of life loss for people with chronic depression. Now, how exactly can depression lead to death? Now, the obvious answer would be suicide. People are taking their own lives. But in fact, that only accounted for one in five of the premature deaths. The others were attributed to lifestyle factors. So people who are depressed are less likely to eat a healthy diet, uh, engage in regular physical activity, and are more likely to use tobacco. People who are depressed are also most likely to suffer from social, social isolation. This goes to show that it's not only the severe depressed who take their lives that are accountable for the mortal, increased mortality with depression. It can be milder depression leading to behavioral changes or social changes in, in level of social interaction that can account for poor health outcomes. So what have we got to treat depression? Well, I'm going to go through several slides here, and I recommend you refer back to that PHQ-9 we discussed. If your score is 10 or above, or you're thinking of hurting yourself, then I recommend you seek immediate medical attention from a qualified healthcare provider. So the first tip for depression is Think about depression as the consequence of being bored. So when we are bored, when our minds are not engaged in a current activity, in, a, in something that captivates our attention, an area called the default mode network can be seen to be activated on MRI. The default mode network is, our, is the voice in our heads that tells us, that thinks about the future and about the past. And often, um, anxiety about the future or worry about the future or rumination about the past lead to anxiety and depression respectively. So if you think about depression being the consequence of not being engaged in the present, the goal then is to find a way of being engaged in the present. And a very well-respected technique for this is called flow. And I highly recommend this book by Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi. Flow is a description of what people who have optimal experiences in all walks of life are able to achieve. There's a common recipe for finding flow in your day to day and in any moment in your life. The common elements are described in the book, but in short, they're setting a clear goal having it be a challenge that matches your skills and an activity that gets immediate feedback. You can apply this to any activity in your day and you can improve your mood at any point in your day by focusing your attention on something that help that enables you to be able to lose yourself in the experience. Some examples are cooking, reading, listening to audiobooks, going for a walk or bike ride, meditating, yoga, conversations with others. Many of these are physical in nature, and that's because when we are 
exerting ourselves, even walking, we can't help but feel the bodies that we're inhabiting. And um, it's a lot easier to be present when you're actually challenging your body at any activity. My next recommendation is digital detox. There's large studies showing that smartphone use contributes to anxiety, depression, and insomnia. Behaviors that I recommend to adopt for healthier relationship with your smartphone include limiting your smartphone use to not more than two hours a day, opting for in-person interactions over virtual, removing app notifications from your phone, turning off work mode on your phone when you're not in the office, putting away your phone when you're eating with others or basically doing anything else in the real world, unplugging the hour before sleep, when you go online, defining a purpose beforehand, not, um, relieving boredom is not a purpose, and setting a time limit for how long you'll be online ahead of time so you don't get trapped in the black hole of your smartphone. So the next option for treating depression, and this is of depression, of therapy and antidepressants. Therapy and antidepressants are the two most proven strategies for treating depression. The self-help behaviors are meant and, and to play a supportive role or for people who have a depression score of less than 10. But, the, but when your score is 10 or above, therapy, or you're thinking of hurting yourself, therapy and or medication are appropriate. So if you're looking for a therapist, and I recommend cognitive behavioral therapy as a modality with the most evidence for helping people with depression, you can check out your insurance's website to find therapists that are covered or in, in network. You can also check out this link, which is constantly updated, and it's in the resource section, and it provides a list of therapists that have been recently reviewed by patients who I see in San Francisco. Many of these therapists see patients through uh, telemedicine, so you may be able to find a therapist on this list even if you don't live in San Francisco. Exercise can have a profound effect on mood and um, well-being. For one, exercise releases endorphins, which are uh, bind to the body's natural morphine receptors, the same receptors that are stimulated when we take in um, chemical, the, the, the human-made morphine. So we can have that same feeling of that runner's high from physical exercise. And um, the two types of physical exercise that we know have overall health benefits, so would be great to kill bir two birds with one stone, treat depression and meet your exercise goals, are aerobic exercise for 150 minutes at moderate intensity per week or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity per week. Moderate intensity is just walking. So if you go out for um, a brief walk for 30 minutes, five days a week, that counts. Resistance training, in addition to aerobic training, is recommended, and this is two sessions per week. This does not have to be free weights. You do not have to go to the gym. This can be uh, yoga. This can be, and I use the Down Dog app for yoga. This can be resistance training. So I use, um, or I've used Home Workout, which is an app, and um, use, it uses your own body weight as resistance. So both of these, both aerobic exercise and resistance training, not only can improve mood, they, can, they also benefit overall health. Next is activities you enjoy. So when we're depressed, we tend to become less active and stop doing the things we enjoy. And that's a vicious cycle because we're not doing the things we enjoy, so we feel more depressed. One of the reasons that we stop doing things we're going to enjoy is because of this kind of cognitive um, 
bias we have, and it's called emotional predicting. When we think about how we'll feel doing something in the future, rather than remember how much we enjoyed in the past, we tend to use whatever emotion we're feeling at the present to predict how we'll feel in the future, no matter what the activity. So if I'm feeling really down and I think about going for a walk, I'm not going to remember how well, how good I felt yesterday when I went for a walk. I'm going to think about how bad I feel right now when I anticipate how I'll feel when I go for that walk. So this emotional predicting can get us into trouble. And it's important, therefore, not to pay attention to that negative, that, that the, the, um, the shadow that's cast over our prediction of future events, to actually, in the words of O.H. Moore, act ourselves into a better way of feeling. Do the things that we know have made us feel good in the past, rather than waiting to feel ourselves into a better way of acting, rather than waiting to feel like we want to do something, do it because we've learned in the past that it helps and we, our, our moods will ensue, a positive mood will ensue, and rather than something that we think that we will predict we will feel, it, we can rely on our knowledge from the past that this is something that has helped. Next is sunlight. So regular sunlight, probably 30 minutes a day has been shown to modulate serotonin. Serotonin is the feel-good chemical of the brain. And when we, when our bodies, what, what sunlight does is it slows down the breakdown of serotonin as it's trying to cross the synapses in the brain. This is the same effect of taking an antidepressant. So getting some regular sunlight is actually a natural antidepressant. And finally, there's medication. So the class of medications that I recommend are selective or that are generally recommended are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. You should consider these if you have a score of 10 or above on the depression screen, or if you're thinking of hurting yourself, or if you just think medications are worth a try. Um, these are a effective class of medications. They're not addictive. They don't create, they're not like taking in a feel-good chemical. What they do is they allow serotonin, which is the body's own feel-good chemical, time to cross the synapse and have its effect. Otherwise, for some people, serotonin is broken down rapidly before it has a chance to cross. These medications slow down that degradation of serotonin, giving the neurotransmitter more time to work. In conclusion, we've discussed the recommendation to treat depression. We talked about the seriousness of depression, how it affects overall health. We talked about the value of measuring your own depression severity if you answer that you are depressed. And we discussed specific ways for addressing depression. We talked about flow or finding engagement in the present. We talked about improving your behavior with your smartphone. We talked about the value of therapy, of regular both aerobic and resistance training, physical activity. We talked about the idea of emotional predicting and how we're better off acting ourselves into a better way of feeling rather than waiting to feel like we want to act. We talked about the value of sunlight, which is a, the brain's natural antidepressant. And we talked about the medications, the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and how they work and who they might be helpful for. Thank you for your time listening to this video. I, if you are depressed, and you're thinking of hurting yourself or you're scoring 10 or above, I strongly encourage you to seek professional help. For everyone, I hope these self-help tips are useful to you and I wish you the best of luck 